In this episode, Citrus Heights Reserve Officer Dave Kropp gives us a law enforcement perspective on domestic violence. When we talk about uh, victims of domestic violence, many times we're talking about a victim who develops coping skills to live within that violent environment. They don't necessarily develop coping skills to leave the environment. The coping skills are developed to, to, to stay and to survive within, especially if there's children involved. Uh, we know, as well as most victims uh, know, that leaving the relationship is when the risk factors really increase. That's where the threats increase. That's where the danger increases. That's where the, the, the risks for um, increased assaults and injuries and threats really increase. And so for those reasons as well as others, sometimes victims don't feel comfortable accepting services or working with us. So that's real important. The number one thing I think we can all do is to convince victims to utilize services, to receive services and to be receptive to our advocates. Uh, Citrus Heights has a unique program where a community for peace developed a divert uh, response, that's domestic violence response team. The divert response includes a trained officer and a trained advocate. They ride together as partners. So when they respond to domestic violence situations, the officers are there to collect the evidence, to take the photographs, to get the statements, and to look for the bad guy, while our advocates are there explaining services and developing that trust and rapport to demystify the system that they're about to enter and let them know that the advocate will be working with them throughout the process. Well, the first thing is, is training. Um, we're in, in first responders like law enforcement and CPS, um, officers and, and social workers are constantly being promoted, moving into other divisions or going to other departments or agencies and we're uh, receiving new officers and new social workers on a regular basis. So it's important to make sure that we maintain training for our first responders on the intricacies and implications of domestic violence and children exposed to domestic violence. Uh, the other, one of the other challenges is to, as we respond, to present ourselves in such a way that victims see us as uh, their partners in escaping their violent environment. Too many times in the past, um, the system has represented barriers uh, to, to the way they live and the, the, the way they need to uh, uh, transition out of a violent environment. So sometimes they're, they're leery when we walk in the door or we have CPS, are we there to take their kids? No, we're not there to take our kids. We're there to offer help, but they don't always see it that way. So that's another challenge is to develop trust and rapport with the victims. And then also lastly, in addition to developing trust and rapport, it's important to make sure that we help victims stay the course. It's very difficult to leave a relationship for a number of valid reasons. Uh, but one of the reasons is that the system is so mysterious. Uh, the criminal justice system is not always user friendly. So that's where advocacy is really huge. Uh, convincing the, the, the victim to trust us and also to follow us uh, and to use our services as they transition through the system is really important. Otherwise, they fall through the, ca the cracks, they, we lose touch with them or they recant their stories and we lose the ability to deliver services effectively to them. Yeah, when it comes to domestic violence, we're not necessarily first responders. Other first responders may be family, extended family members, they could be babysitters, they could be neighbors, they could be healthcare workers, they could be school teachers, clergy, uh, you name it. So many people all have an opportunity to understand the implications of domestic violence and be real first responders. And although we don't advocate anybody putting themselves in harm's way, uh, witnesses are huge in terms of documenting, as I mentioned earlier, this environment that children live in. So uh, to be witnesses, to be willing to talk to the police 
you know, and provide statements as to what this environment looks like, to be able to call the police when they hear things that shouldn't be hearing from a particular resident, especially when children are involved. So being our eyes and ears and being willing to step up and talk uh, and to explain what they see and what they hear is, is huge for us. I want you to trust us. I want you to ask questions. Um, I want you to tell us what you need. And I want you to know that we will do our best in law enforcement to make sure that the response is effective, that we work with the district attorney's office to hold abusers accountable. We work in partnership with advocates to make sure that you have an advocate with you at all times during this process. Uh, we will make sure that the system, we demystify the system for you so you understand every step of the process. And also, uh, we do our best to make sure that we keep children with non-offending parents. Unless there are extending circumstances, we understand that victims are learning to cope. And sometimes coping skills in a violent environment are not necessarily conducive to healthy parenting. We understand that. We want the victim to heal and we want the victim and children to heal at the same time. So uh, my message, although that was longer than I anticipated, would be to tell them that we understand. Um, let's, let's talk and to let them know that there's a, a partnership here that's ready to work with them at all levels. One of the things that we're doing is uh, uh, we're hosting a conference on October 29th at the Citrus Heights Community Center uh, on children exposed to domestic violence. And it's for all of those first responders that I mentioned earlier, that anybody who interacts with children on a regular basis. It could be a community member, it can be an advocate, community-based organization or an advocacy organization. It could be in law enforcement, it could be social services, schools, healthcare, clergy, uh, anybody who's interested in learning more about how domestic violence affects children would be interested in uh, coming to this conference. Uh, it is supported by this partnership that I'm coordinating or that I help to coordinate and that is with the Citrus Heights Police Department, A Community for Peace and CPS.